What's up, everybody? I'm Tim and Baloo from Baloo Restaurant, Miami, Florida. This beautiful Tuesday afternoon, we're going to eat some yummy, delicious, flavorful food. I'm going to cook a cool recipe. Can't really screw this recipe up. So thank you guys seriously for joining. I hope you guys are all staying safe during these crazy times. Hope you guys are just trying to pass your time well, adding new hobbies, picking up a recipe or two as you, as you kind of build your portfolio of cooking. This is a good recipe to add. It's easy. It can be as fast as you want it to be. Really, it can. Or it could be, you know, as extensive, honestly. It depends how you want to take it. Let's start by first thanking our sponsors, which is Field Roast. Awesome makers of some really good plant-based products. Really just solid, solid products. What I like about their products, is, and I'll talk about it more, is just everything's packed with a lot of flavor. And, you know, as chefs, that's what we get down with. We're always looking for flavor and texture. And there's always looking for new and cool products to kind of play with. So we want to thank uh, Phil Rose. And they partnered and collabed with Chef's Feed out of the Bay Area. We love Chef's Feed, a longtime friends. They really do a lot to support the chef community. Go check everyone out. Check out Phil Rose. Check out Chef's Feed. And all in all, they're backing up the IRC. And that's what I think a lot of the chefs are standing behind right now on our social pages or as we try to get messages out there people are always asking hey how can i support uh, what can i do go on and log on to the irc there'll be a link on the bottom of the page that stands for the independent restaurant coalition uh, you see some of the biggest names standing behind it going and petitioning to congress to, to to try to get some support so your local and favorite restaurants will be open after all this is said and done so again be safe, support a good cause, and let's have some fun today and cook some food. Belly full. Okay, let's get down. Uh, today's recipe, again, if you log on earlier, you heard me mention I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, a lot of Central American, Mexican, Latino culture there embedded in my roots. Uh, I love the Mission District. Go and get all this luscious, great, great, great food. So this was a recipe I always have in my repertoire of like Mexican stewed beans. It just so happens that I came across this product and it works very well, which is the uh, Field Roast Mexican Chipotle Sausage. And together it's just a really harmonious dish. And like I said, it's easy and it's easy to put together. So I'm going to start putting it together by walking you through the ingredients. In the recipe, we're using a little bit of garlic and onion, also commonly known in the Latino culture as a sofrito, especially when you add like peppers and tomato in there. So we got the garlic, the onions, we're gonna rock some peppers. We have definitely the field roast sausage. Uh, we have some pinto beans we're choosing. You can use any bean that you want. I like the pinto bean, it's a mood thing, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's pink beans, you know, honestly, I've made this with black beans, garbanzo beans. It's a vibe. So whatever you want to get down with, by all means, no pressure. Um, we're going to fortify it with a little bit of crushed tomato, a little bit of tomato paste, a little bit of spices. But honestly, you don't need that many spices when using this product because this product is packed with a lot of flavor. That's no joke. That's straight up. Um, if you want it like picante or like spicy, then you could take it that way. But this is not too spicy. It's just got rich smokiness and, and it's solid, you know what I mean? We're going to make a little bit of a spice mix though. We'll talk about toasting our spices and crushing it. And then we'll put the dish together like you would have it for dinner. With a little bit of, we'll make some cilantro rice. Add some of this or that. We'll look around in the fridge, see what we got. All right, but let's let's get start chopping and getting things down. I'm gonna start with some onions. When chopping onions or, or dicing onions, I mean, again, ask questions if you want, but this is a simple dish, you know, it's not rocket science. One thing about dicing onions, though, a little chef trick for anyone who's at home or whatever watching, 
we kind of leave the butt on. I slice a little bit of it off, but it keeps the onion intact. So when you're dicing the onion, it doesn't, you know, move on you and you're able to get those really nice dice pieces. So sometimes when people are saying, oh, I never get to, my onions don't look like yours, or they're not, they're not diced as nice. That's a little bit of a trick. So, again, as I was mentioning, I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. And Mexican food is very dear to my heart. You know, carnitas and tacos, barbacoa. This is just a stewed bean because it's easy. You can use canned beans, like I said. If you want to soak beans and cook them overnight, you can do that. So I'm just dicing some onions. If you want to chop them, you can. But we're just going to dice these up nice. We're going to shuck a little bit of corn, put some peppers in there. I'm going to dice a little bit of onions earlier. And again, guys, if you have any questions, man, drop it in there. Talk to me. Say something nice to me. We're all uh, looking for some social interaction. I invited you into my home. That's how desperate I am to interact with people. <laughs> all right, we diced some onions. I got these cute little peppers. So cute. Just gonna add some peppers in here, guys. Simple little chop chop. Like I said, you can use canned beans. I ended up soaking my beans overnight and then I boiled them earlier today, really slow and low. And what I also did is when, whenever I cook beans like that, I always like to keep the liquid. So when we get over to the stove, I'll show you that we kept the bean cooking liquid. Helps make it a little creamy from all the starch that's released during the cooking process. And we're just going to go with that dice. If you want a julienne, you can. You know, cooking is always about, again, a vibe and mood. Throw on some tunes. What kind of mood are we in today? Again, I'm in South Florida. We have the afternoon tropical storms. We just had a storm blow through. A little bit of thunder. That kind of got me into the mood of getting down with these beans. If any of you guys watching have had any of the other field roast products, please chime in. When I learned about field roast, I was pretty amazed to see that they have some really cool products that are really versatile use this sausage basically one of my favorite ways is just grilled on the barbecue you know like if you're tailgating this actually works really well for tailgating again sometimes you run into certain products and you know there's this whole world of plant-based that's a little bit foreign to chefs in a way because we're like we get down with a lot of other things um meat centric things and it was really cool to see that this product i couldn't believe like the taste and the texture it was really solid we have a guest that's saying the apple sausage is really good oh yeah and the chow cheese nice i'm all about apple sausage um, i love apple sausage i love these type of sausages and breakfast burritos scrambles quesadillas on top of like um, queso, like queso dip with some of the sausage is fire. Again, the sausage is, when I mentioned in my cooking, I think most chefs, right? We kind of focus on yin and yang. So we want salty, sweet, 
uh, spicy, sour. We want all these elements, and that's how we think when we are composing a dish. So when you, you know, those little secrets that chefs do, we think about those things. And this sausage lends really well to that because it, it gives us the spice from the chipotle, but then it also has garlic, and it also has a little bit of sweet hints from the brown sugar. So that ends up working well for this composition. I'm serving this dish with a little bit of rice, so it's kind of like, I don't We have a question. Yeah. Do you ever use the veggie stock or anything with the corn on the cob? Yeah, that's a great question for sure, thousand percent. Actually, everything, like all of these scraps I'm putting in here, it's either going to be for compost or I could use for a stock. I threw this in there, obviously. I plan on using it for compost, but all the time the cob for stock is great with mushroom stems, as well as like with the cob. Let me do this and show you. Who asked that question? Okay, well, whoever it was, <laughs> thank you. That was a great question. We had another question come in. They want to know how long you've been cooking. How long have I been cooking? No, that's showing my age. You can't ask that question. What's wrong with you? Jeez, I'm supposed to have my back. Actually, now, geez, it's going over 20 years cooking. So that's a long time. But let me get back to the cob. Listen, it's great for stock, but if you want to go another, like, extra plus plus, take the back of your knife and just kind of scrape it. And if you want, you can do this over a bowl. And... We'll give you a close-up now with the camera so you can see. And we'll actually add this here. But this is how you get what we call corn milk. And when you're using this uh, corn milk, this has a lot of natural starch. And it's just will help thicken up like if you're making creamed corn or anything like this. You can see it's almost milky. So even though I cut the, the kernels away, I, there was still all this residual. So when making chowders and so forth, and like you said, a stock, you can use this natural starch to give you a, a much thicker uh, vegetable stock. Great question. Learned that in all my over 20 years of cooking. Great questions coming in here. Good, good, good questions. So, I smashed my garlic, then sliced it. You know, there's always ways about it. Sometimes I like to just smash the garlic like that and leave it in the dish. Call it, let it float, whatever you like to call it. And again, you can get the recipe on the link. But basically, we're almost there. So we have our garlic, our onions, peppers and corn. Now our filled roast sausage we sliced up earlier, so it doesn't come sliced, we slice that. And like I said, it's all about the filled roast, texture is fire, it's actually solid. Where are you at? Can people see that? Got all the herbs and spices in there. What I love is this, will you see that? That's awesome. You don't be scared of that. When we're cooking, mm, when you're cooking like, Food, you want to extract that flavor and there's so much in there that bleeds and comes out in our uh, cooking process and that makes the dish like uh, awesome I think we're ready to go over to the fire now mm -hmm. I have a question would you say that mise en place is one of the most important techniques for home cooks to learn and master great question listen to that one wow that is a really good question Mise en place is everything. Mise en place, for anyone who doesn't know, is a French word for everything in its place. It is the fundamental of cooking because you need to build your ingredients before you move on to other stages. So you have to dice all your peppers, you have to chop your vegetables, you have to wash your vegetables. It, you have to have those ready before you're able to move on. Otherwise, when it's time to just assemble the dish, you could be like, it's a dance. It's all about the dance. You know, the music starts playing. First, you start bobbing your head. Then you start getting down. 
You know, you got to have that when you cook. If you don't cook, you can't do it. I'm pretty sure, like two and two. So we're going to put our ingredients here. We're going to get to the fire. I'm going to bring the spices because we're also going to put together some spices. I hope that answered your question, right? Mise en place is fundamental. I have one more thing to mise en place. So thanks for keeping me honest, which is a, a garnish. So again, like, let's close up here so we can show everyone what we're doing. And you can kind of see the importance of mise en place because this is this will follow through. We're kind of going from start to finish. So with mise en place is a flow. So we, we're starting here. So we start with these two ingredients, add these, add these. Then when we're done, we finish with this. So that's how we kind of come together and you build your dish and assemble. So we're gonna start with that now. So you can cook this in any pot. I have a, a brazier and it's actually a little hot. So let's see, I had it getting ready while we were finishing our mise en place. So I'm gonna add a little bit of oil and just see. All right, we're good. If it was to smoke, I know my pan was a little bit too hot. I chose to start off with a little bit of uh, olive oil. We'll add some garlic. So in the recipe, we add the garlic and the onions at the same time to allow them to sweat together. But right now, you know, like I said, it's a mood thing. And I want to saute my garlic a little bit longer. Do you always cook with olive oil? Do you ever use other oil, other oils? No, so the way I cook is basically, it's always thought through on really the ethnicity of the dish, the origin of the dish. So I happen to use olive oil now because of the use of olive oil in Spain and the Mediterranean and the influence that is in Latin America. Um, Otherwise, if I'm doing an Asian dish or Southeast Asian dish, I'd use a neutral oil, then maybe add sesame at some period of time. So I, I try to stay on neutral oils overall. And if I'm cooking anything Mediterranean, that's when I'll go and use uh, uh, olive oil. And that will also go into uh, levels and layers, meaning if I'm cooking paella, for instance, I'm looking for Spanish olive oil. And maybe uh, abraquina olives or castroveriano olives, you know, something that uh, would be indigenous of Spain and really speak to the terroir, the climate, the humidity of what uh, people are eating with and the ingredients of that country and region. So we have the onions and garlic in there and we're going to let that sweat down. I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil. And while that's sweating down, we're gonna to toast some spices. So as I mentioned in the beginning, I cook with a lot of spices at Baloo. You know, uh, everything from Indian style curries to Southeast Asian curries. We make masalas, garam masalas, uh, curry spices, all of these type of things. So it's always important to have a well-stocked pantry of spices. To start this dish, what we're going to use is black pepper and coriander, which I have some coriander seeds here. I have the black pepper and coriander, you guys can see. If you're not aware, coriander seed is cilantro seeds. So even if you grabbed a bunch of coriander, germinated them and threw them in the grass, you would have fresh cilantro. So this fire is on basically Low to medium, we're not taking it too high. We're letting it, this slow and low kind of vibe for now. So I added my whole seeds, the larger spices in first. Let's take a look. Yeah, for sure.
And when you're working with uh, toasted spices, listen, when it's time to grind, you could do whatever you'd like as far as using a coffee grinder. I happen to have a mortar and pestle around. It works for me. One reason I like to use a mortar and pestle when, the pestle when using a grinding spices is because sometimes I just don't want a powder. Sometimes I want some texture. It's okay to have a coarse grind on your spices. I think it adds another dimension to your dishes. So these spices are toasted. You know that because of two things. You'll start to see a color, number one. You'll start to hear sound. The spices often start to pop. And that's ensuring that you're basically releasing the oils from the husk and the outside of the, the spice. Turn that off. I do have some ground spices, so here I have a little bit of chili powder and paprika, and I'm going to add that at the end, making sure I'm not over toasting the spice and potentially burning them. We don't want that. But if you can see right away, the spice has turned a deep color, and that adds to the, the nice complexity of this dish alongside, again, the chipotle seasoning. So these bad boys are working in here. As I said, there is a lot of flavor in the sausage, but you do want to season as you go. We're just going to hit it with a little bit of salt. I'll help. I'll help the onions and garlic sweat a little bit more. Any questions, people? Feel free. All right. I'm all about that silent, quiet, sexy type. Feel the vibe. I'm just going to smash away, make the music what my... We have a question. Question. How long can you keep whole spices on your shelf before they go bad? You know what? I, I, I like to use that three to six rule, meaning like any time in between, before three months is the ideal time, but between three and six months is when it's like, you can use them, but just, you know, check them. They can, after six months, I really... I want to try, I, I prefer to try to get some fresh spices. I think they're made to last longer in the sense of the way, you know, they're sold on, on the shelves of the store. But again, that's why I said, if you can use whole, use whole. This is nice. I like this. And like I told you, from the mortar and pestle, I'm able to have the, the basically the pieces of the coriander. And that really, to me, is like a nice thing. It makes me feel like when I'm eating the curry or the stew, that it's really homemade. We have another question coming in. Yeah. Do you salt vegetables when you start sauteing or cooking them? I heard that you should always salt at the beginning of the sauteing. Uh, well, it, it depends what you want. If you're caramelizing, for example, say I'm caramelizing onions for a beautiful, like, French onion dip or, uh, you know, just caramelizing them to eat them in a sandwich. I don't want to season my, uh, my uh, onions at the beginning. Or if I'm uh, sauteing really hard some mushrooms, you don't want to season them with salt in the beginning. Those are two examples. What basically happens is Adding the salt in the beginning act, forces the ingredient to release its moisture. So when you're caramelizing onions, you don't want uh, you want to extract and release all the water, but you don't want it to sweat in the pan. So that's the reason why you wouldn't do that to mushrooms either. If you want those really nice brown, deeply like roasted mushrooms, you don't want to salt them in the beginning because they'll leach out all their water and you'll never get the color and that layer of complexity that you're looking for. So that's why you would not do that in the beginning. 
other vegetables, like if you're doing a stir fry or saute, like if we were going to throw some pasta in here, then by all means, you follow what I said, layering the flavor. But it really depends, again, like the oil question, the end is the, 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 end is the way you start. So if that makes any sense to us. Knowing what you're, you want to end up with is, would be the way you start. So I added the peppers in. And I don't want them to break down too much. So I'm going to immediately go into adding some of the sausage. I add some in the beginning and I add some at the end. Because I want them to release their oils and get that flavor into the pan. And we're going to really start cooking. I'm going to heat this up and get this going there. Good questions, guys. Thank you for asking. What drink or cocktail would you pair with this dish? <laughs> what a good question. We're going to flip it now. Here, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to like, just be real, 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 real. Let's see, I'm going to get down with this. We're going in the pantry. Let's go. I wish I, you know, I got some libations over there but it's actually funny you said that because again my family's from the caribbean and we drink something called sorrel it's often uh we often drink it in uh, christmas time uh but in mexico they also drink it as agua de jamaica so i thought that was a, a beautiful combination with today's dish so agua de jamaica is also known as uh hibiscus so we're gonna actually get clean some of this up. This is my oregano and cumin. While that's going, you know, while the, while the food's on the fire, you always have to be drinking. <laughs> Come on, this is that's the life of uh, you know. So to answer your question, this is a great cocktail. This is a uh, agua de Jamaica or a hibiscus drink, sorrel. Like I said, you can find it at uh, you can find the hibiscus leaves probably at your local grocer now everywhere. And this is what, I, uh, what I'm actually drinking with this dish. I, I made this again a couple days ago where you take the hibiscus flowers, you cook it, basically you make a tea with a lot of cinnamon, allspice, fresh ginger, orange peel. And this goes great with rum. That's the bottom line. That's what it is. You get down, you know. Salud, a santé, cheers, wherever you guys are. I, th and I think everyone's doing that COVID, COVID lifestyle. So it's five o'clock somewhere for sure. Mm. Thank you for chiming in there. That's a good one. So listen, we've thrown in our sausage. It's released some of that luscious flavor. You can see that at the bottom of the pan. Again, garlic, chipotle, a little bit of that brown sugar. We're getting a little bit of like pan drippings there. That's good. That's love. Never be scared of that. That's loving. Important. Wooden spoon. Scrape all that love. And let's get down now with adding some of the beans. Again, I said in the beginning it could be as easy or complex. You want it complex, you could make the beans from scratch. Then that's a whole nother thing of, okay, adding some layers of, you know, flavors while you're cooking those beans, garlic, herbs, mirepoix, celery, carrot, onion. I love the colors here. Again, the recipe's online. It's about a 15 ounce can of pinto beans. That's looking good. I said what we did was we saved our stock. What added. other types of beans can you use? In this recipe, I love pink beans. The small pink beans are beautiful. As you see these colors, white beans are actually beautiful. They speckle and then they, uh, the sausage bleeds a little bit of the paprika and chipotle spice. This is a vegetable stock. One of the other viewers mentioned it was a really smart question. Yes, use a vegetable stock. This one was made with... Uh, quite a bit of carrots and mushroom stems but this is like this is looking sexy already so we're gonna let that come up to a boil you'll see that very quickly and 
what we'll do is add our spices actually. So, and as we talked about building, listen, I'm adding about three quarters of the spices, and then we'll we'll decide if we're going to add the rest. Listen, that was the what we ground. Now I'm adding a pinch of Mexican oregano, and actually. The recipe calls for cumin, which we actually added quite a bit in, in the stock, the vegetable stock. So you're just going to look at your ingredients and kind of see where you want to take them. This looks good right now, but I do want to add a little bit more tomato product. So I'm actually adding some crushed tomato. You could use diced tomatoes. You could throw in whole tomatoes. I'm going to add a little bit of tomato paste just to intensify that a little bit. How do you like cooking on an induction burner versus gas? Oh, that's a good question. You know, honestly, if I could, again, I'm here in South Florida, I don't happen to have gas in my house. But I definitely would prefer gas. It's just, I think chefs, I've worked in professional kitchens that we've had induction burners. But the flow, like I said, the way you dance is different. I, I love working saute station at the restaurant. And it, it, like, no pun intended, seriously, straight up, it's like a dance. When you're on saute, you have like six, eight pans, and it, it's a rhythm, it's a flow. And, and you have to multitask and you get into like it's a it's a dance because you got to remember your steps one two three four and with gas you could the way you can lower things and you can see the flame and you hear the food is completely different that there's uh, that when you're with induction you don't have that full flow but listen it is what it is I mean I like you know what I have, but I would prefer gas. Um, so one thing I love to do, these beans are already, I kicked up the fire and they're already intensifying and the stew is going and it's coming together. And I haven't even done what, my, what I say, I like kind of like a secret, which is, I'll do it now, is depending on the thickness of your stew, what, depending on what you want as your final product, I go through and smash the beans. You want to smash a little bit of these beans. That's one thing. I like creamy stews. Everyone's different. My wife likes uh, intact whole beans when we're having like rice and black beans. I go and I grab the immersion blender or fork and I smash them up a little bit. I like that creaminess. For me, it adds a nice little layer of complexity. Look at that. And again, I hope that uh, viewer is still on, the one that asked about the corn. This also thickened up because we added the corn milk from the cob. Listen, I'm, this developed an easy recipe. It could be frozen corn. It could be as easy as you want. Canned beans, frozen corn, which is beautiful, great products that they have. And I think we're there. I just turned it down. I like to add a little bit of my garnish in the pan, not only on top, so that's a little bit of green onions. I'm adding a little bit of cilantro that will chop up really quick. Just a little bit here. And you know what I like? We have that tomato product. So, I actually want to add a little bit more tomatoes. Kind of like a garnish. Any other questions, guys? You guys are asking really good questions. Thank you for that. You made this really fun. We have a viewer that mentioned black garlic is really good on, crust on crostini. Oh, who is that? One of our viewers <laughs> one of our viewers well listen mm. viewer that's a great mention i want to get down with you consider yourself a friend and anytime you're throwing that black garlic on a crostini please invite me 
hit me on the gram. And speaking about Instagram and, and social, listen guys, please log on and, and go and check out uh, Field Roast. Again, I had some people ask me when I told them I'd be cooking this dish, I said, where can I get Field Roast? Well, you know, you can log on to their website. They actually have a locator. So you can find out where you can get these beautiful products in your local neighborhood. As well as just want to reiterate and thank them for their generous donation to the hospitality industry, helping to support real independent restaurants at this time, like mine, Baloo, uh, as we pivot. You know, I'm going to use the funds to, to actually just stay afloat and really enter and pivot into the virtual marketplace. And in the next couple of weeks, please stay tuned. Follow me on Instagram at uh, Chef Timon. Follow at Blue Restaurant. We are opening our online marketplace. And I've had so many friends call and say, hey, we know you're your temporary closed. What's going on right now? How can we get your food? Well, the answer is you'll be able to get it online and we'll be delivering it to you contactless and like flavorful. We're making all these really awesome kits of, of all these uh, the, the signature dishes I've been doing at my restaurant, Baloo, like the curries and the Thai marinades and salads and pickles. And, and we're, we're really excited because of donations and partnerships like this that we're able to, to just survive. So thank you again, Field Rose. Thank you again for supporting independent restaurants. I can't say enough about that because... These are crazy times and we're, we're all pivoting to survive. So let's finish this up. The beans are there. Let me tell you, like I said, I'm serving it with white rice. You could definitely serve it with tortillas. That's a way to go. I was going to mix some cilantro with the rice, but listen, it is what it is. I'm just going to plate some of the rice. And again, you could do whatever you want. You eat it the way you like. We're getting down like this at the Blue House today. I guess we'd like to know if you will deliver to New York. <laughs> Listen, like I said in the beginning, I'm not, I, I didn't hint it, but we've had a lot of love from New York with my new activation, Baloo. Uh, so much love from New Yorkers. You guys are like my second city, our second home. My wife and I love it there. Our daughter's name, our baby daughter, her middle name is Brooklyn. You know, Baloo's got to come to New York, and we're trying to make that happen. So we have so many shout-outs to our friends in New York getting through during these times, our chef friends, our restaurant friends. Sorry, I went a little bit heavy-handed on this plating, but you guys know what's up. Um, I mean, this looks incredible as it is, guys. I want to be honest with you there. Um, we're going to just top it with a little bit more tomato. Again, listen, you could put the tomato in a salsa and call it pico de gallo. You could get down like that. We're going to hit it with a little bit more green onions because we love that freshness. Green onion. Um, in the beginning, as I mentioned, that you want to use uh, chefs like uh, Dimension in their food. So we're going to finish with a little bit of uh, squeezed lime for some acid. You know, if you want to add some, some sour cream, you could do your thing. I know there's all different types. Keep it plant-based. And that's what, that's what we're getting down today, guys. I told you it was raining a little. Again, this takes me back to the West Coast. So love of mine. Bay Area, the beautiful Mexican culture. I told you, you know, I used three quarters of the spice. And you want to hit and add some of it right there. Look at that beautiful kind of pool. Listen, man, it's, it's food, guys. It's not rocket science. All we could do is cook with love. I'm cooking with love to you guys. Thank you for tuning in. That fills my heart. Thank you again to Field Rose Chef's Feed. Log on to the IRC. Come support our small restaurants. Keep us alive, and we'll keep cooking for you guys, yeah? I hope to have a drink together with one of you guys. For sure. Happy hour. Let's do it, baby. Stay safe. Peace and love, guys.